So there's two things that I think you need to, to be actually fast at writing music in Ableton Live. The first thing is actually um, knowledge of the program. So knowing just, you know, shortcuts and the physics of how things work in the program. So for instance, like, you know, the physics of how automation works and, and how you can kind of hack it a bit to make it slightly faster by doing a couple of tricks and like the physics of how like audio works and where you can drop it quickly, like by clicking on a certain pixel in the screen or something like that to make a whole thing happen slightly faster than, you know, take you, taking your steps down from from doing things that would usually take five steps to figuring out how to do it in two steps or something like that. So, so there's a bunch of knowledge that you need to know that are just kind of hidden and not mentioned in the manual and stuff. Um, so that's program knowledge. And the second thing you need is just literal physical skill with a mouse and a keyboard. So I personally use a, a gaming mouse, which is a Razer Death Adder and a gaming mouse pad. You can see I've got this big ass mouse pad. And then if you open Synapse, which is Razer's software, I just have the DPI set quite low, which means that to get like one swipe across my screen, I pretty much have to move my hand like right across this huge mouse pad, which makes the accuracy of where I'm putting my mouse more accurate than if I'd had my resolution set to just moving my mouse a tiny bit. When you're trying to click on something and you go to click on it and you miss it, then that's wasting two seconds. But if you, if you get it straight away, then you save two seconds. And if you do that a million times a day, then you've saved like two million seconds. So. <laughs> So anyway, um, I'll go through like some of the shortcuts that I have uh, that I think are important for, for being quick. So obviously there's like cut, copy, paste, duplicate, and then there's also slice and undo. And I use insert silence a lot as well. And loop is another shortcut I use a lot. And then obviously save is a good one to know. So that's pretty much just Command C, Command V, Command X, Command Z, Command S, Command A, if you want to select all, Command L for loop. And that's pretty much it. So um, you can practice them. So for instance, if you just get a piece of audio and just copy it somewhere, you should just spend some time like, you know, chopping it up with Command D and clicking or, you know, spend some time undoing or spend some time just cutting and like cutting and pasting shit elsewhere and, and just doing all that sort of stuff and getting used to the actual like key commands of the program and you know, when you want to do something so you don't have to think about it, you're just like, I want to, you know, duplicate this or cut this or insert some silence here or do something and you don't think about it, it just becomes second nature and you just do it. And the only way to do it is to obviously practice it. Uh, and obviously another thing that you need to know is, you know, creating audio tracks, which is just Command-T and Command-Shift-T for creating a MIDI track, but that's pretty simple. Um, and then, like I was saying before, there's just some, like, slight physics of the program that can make things a little bit faster. So for instance, if I want to put a piece of audio into a sampler, um, the usually the way someone would do it, I guess, is maybe perhaps render the audio onto their desktop or something and then you know, create a MIDI track and then drop a simpler into it and then go to their desktop and grab the piece of audio and then put it in the simpler or something. But there's an actually a much faster way to do that. Uh, so if I want to get, say, this section of audio into a sampler, the fastest way to do it is to highlight it and then if you click on the clip and you just drag slightly down but you don't actually like drag it off the, the, um, the channel, you just kind of drag it a tiny bit and then let it go, that chops it. So you don't even have to press Command D, you just have to like literally highlight a piece of audio and do that. Um, so the first step is that, the second step is Command Shift T really quickly to create a MIDI track. Then the third step is double clicking on that track and then once you've got your piece of audio, just dragging it straight down into this channel and that'll create a simpler and then right clicking on it and going simpler to sampler. And that's it, it's like you've done that, you can do that shit in like two seconds. So there's like little things like that that I think if you incorporate into your workflow, you can actually just f get physically faster at writing music. What I was talking about as well with the physics of the program and automation, um, the same thing that applies to cutting the audio where you can just highlight a piece of audio and slightly drag it off and that cuts the clip. The same physics exists in automation. So if you want to create like a ramp or something in your automation, you can either sit there like a dum-dum creating four automation points like this and doing something like that or you can simply just highlight a section on the grid and just kind of drag your mouse to it and don't quite click on the line because if you click on the line, see it creates a node, but if you click just above the line and grab it and drag it, it just creates four points of automation. So that's kind of like a, you know another slightly quicker way to do that. And yeah, again, just add all these things up, you'll get faster.
there's a couple of quick ways that I like to render things and I render things a lot. If you check out this project, like most of it's all audio. Um, there's not a lot of MIDI left in it, but I, I usually start in MIDI and then kind of render things down and chop them and affect them in different ways. So the way that I usually render things, because usually I want to render a couple of groups to one thing, uh, sorry, a couple of channels to one thing, and the reason why I'll do that is because, well, there's a few reasons. Um, one reason is to save the processing power on my computer. Another reason is to transcend my mental processing power. So if you're looking at 50 channels, you're going to look at it and get kind of overwhelmed. And if you want to just like change a couple of things in a couple of the channels, you know, it might be a little bit like daunting and you, and you kind of get like uninspired or just like, fuck this, I can't, I can't be bothered dealing with this shit. So what I do is I, I take my entire tune when I'm finished, or not when I'm finished writing it, but when I'm kind of getting towards the end and I'll render the whole thing into like six channels. And if you take a look at um, Chlorine Project, you'll see there's a, a folder called Stemage One. And that's just a couple of stems, like Vox stems. Uh, see these vo Vox channels here? It used to be like, I think, 10 or so channels. The rises and drops were like 10 or so channels. Uh, the IDM drums were like 20 channels. The IDM, IDM deepness was like 10 channels or something. And even still, this project file ended up being like 50 channels after rendering all of that shit. Um, but yeah, basically, the way that I actually render it, there's a couple of quick ways to do it. Um, and the fastest way that I think, if it depends on the on the situation, but if you're just trying to render, say again, like a small chunk like that amount that I've highlighted there, you can either like Command Shift R and then export it somewhere and then export it out to say my desktop and then I can go and find it in this browser here and then kind of drag it back into a channel. And that's kind of quick, but you can do it quicker. You can create an audio channel and just hit resampling. And then if you just uh, like solo the tracks you want and then just record it. <laughs> It's done and then you just turn turn that shit off record and then you've just got your piece of audio here um that's that's the fastest way i think if you're you know rendering multiple channels at once and it's just for a small section but obviously if you're rendering something that's like a minute long then you'll command shift r it out to your desktop because that would be the faster option in that case you know what i mean so it's like you just weigh up things that you're doing at any point in time during the project and weigh up like which one you think would be the fastest way to do it and eventually again it becomes second nature to just decide on the spot how the fastest way to do anything is going to possibly be kind of like if you're gaming or something and you're trying to find like every shortcut in the level yeah so when you've got um all the sort of in individual tracks before you render them all down to one do you like sort of what effects will you apply to them like will you leave reverb on and and um yeah so compression and stuff or yeah so the way that i was showing you to render it like where i have a bunch of tracks and then i'll just kind of solo the ones i want so let's say hypothetically i want to track one and three here and then I just soloed both of them and rendered it with resampling um, into a new channel or rendered it straight out of the master just by pressing Command Shift R. Uh, what that would do is that would render it with all the sends as well. So obviously it would have all the effects on it, but I actually like having things like reverb tails to be more tangible, like in an audio file. Because otherwise you kind of sit there like messing with this invisible thing, right? And you're kind of messing with a, a decay time that you can't actually see. You can hear it, but and you can see it metering. But I like to actually be able to see the piece of audio because then I feel like it's just easier to work with at that stage or something. So yeah, I, I render it all with effects for sure. Okay, but I render it without a limiter or a compressor on the master. Like if it has a compressor on the actual sound, I'll leave it there. But if it's on the master and it's like pushing it, then I'll take it off because then that would like obviously degrade quality when you're like putting it through another limiter in the mastering process.